makes me terrible. It is time to review the NFL Draft and also take a look at how we did in our mock draft. Let's take a look at the board. Up first, we got the Bears. They did very well in this draft. It was not tough. It was not tough for them to do it. They had the first pick. They had the ninth pick. They nailed them both. They easily won this draft. I mean, they had the first pick and the ninth pick. Like I said, it's hard for them to lose this draft to anybody else um, with what they were able to do in the first round. And, of course, looking over at our selections, we did have Caleb Williams selected first overall. Uh, gets a little messed up here at 2-3 and three. Um, the whole time. Should have listened. Uh, they were saying the commanders would go Jaden Daniels. I thought that was, I thought that was a smoke screen. No, I don't know. Um, I just, I, I do think it's a good pick. Um, I, ironically, I, I think it's Caleb, Drake, and then Jaden in terms of QB rankings. But in terms of fit for the situation, I, I feel like uh, Daniels is a good fit for the commanders, and and May is a better fit for the Pats and their timeline, so I, I think it worked out great for both teams, both players, um, and they're both good um, in their own ways, um, so I, I, you know what, I got it wrong, but I like how it worked out. The Pats got Drake May, I'm fine with that. Um, I think it would have been fine with Daniels, I just think he's he's a better fit for the Commanders, really. Um, and then Marvin, Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, easy pick at number four. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, so here, Joe Walt ended up being the Chargers selection. Um, not surprising, I guess, but uh, they lost all their receivers. Thought that would be, you know, the place that they would go. Um, but no, not for the first pick. They said, hey, we'll take the best tackle. You know, we're going to protect our QB. Jim Harbaugh is probably going to want to run the ball a little bit. Um, so it made sense. Made a lot of sense. Um, and then we get to number six right here uh, with JJ. Obviously the Giants did not take him. They were not not even looking QB. They got one more year. Daniel Jones. Um, I should have thought about this one more. This just a bad pick by me. Um, just, you know, I, the Giants why wouldn't they go one more year with Daniel Jones, you know? Um, I just, I don't know. I, I was just so quick to be like, all right, they're done. They're done with him. Why wouldn't they put a little bit of talent around him? Um, try one more year because they have to keep him for one more year. They have an out next year, but this year, you know, it makes sense. I just, uh, just a bad pick, just a bad pick. And then obviously the Titans the whole time, I had Joe Alt going to them, but... They end up going with uh, J.C. Latham. Um, had him going in the teens, but he was always a highly projected guy who fell down the boards over the last year. You know, just just didn't get that one right. Um, you know, I, I, oh, this always happens with the, some of these tackles. Uh, last year it was, um, uh, who was it? Whoever the, whoever the Cardinals selected last year, I had him rated a little lower, but he ended up being one of the first guys picked and you know it just just how it's going to be with the tackles it's all about the, what these teams like and want and I'm not going to get stuff right either that's why I, I I don't even go off my opinion I I like to go off of everything I try to take everything into account um because my opinion not that good not that good but yeah obviously they took Latham and then the, the craziest one of the draft which What's, what's crazy about this Falcons pick is this pick by itself is a great pick. Okay, maybe maybe it's a reach for Penix, number eight, I don't know. But, you know, in my draft, I had six QBs going top 12. All right, they're just all in different orders. Um, so this is, this is how it was. There's a lot of QB needy teams and some interesting QB prospects. So Penix going eight. Hey, if he's your guy, you take him. And if you were to pair him with some of the young pieces they have on that offense, I mean, really good. They 
I, I think it, it would be a nice little situation to try out. Unfortunately, they signed Kirk Cousins, um, gave him a big contract, and it's really two years until he can get out of it. And even at the end of those two years, there's some dead money, I believe. Um, so, uh, yeah, quite an expensive bridge quarterback. Um, it's just... Um, it's just not a good situation the Falcons are in. Like I said, hey, if they go out and sign, um, what's the, oh my God, what's the, the tackle who just went to the Raiders? Completely blanking. Wilkins, Wilkins. If they go out and give him $100 million deal to be the, the dominating guy on the defensive side and then draft Penix number eight, put him with the weapons out there, all of a sudden you got a team. But they, they gave Kirk Cousins that money. And then it's like, all right, well, the defense still has problems. And then they go with Penix anyways at the number eighth pick to prepare for, what, three years down the line. And then it just becomes a situation of like, all right, what if Penix is ready right away? All of a sudden, you have all this dead cap for Kirk Cousins for, for the first year. Oh, my God, I don't even want to know. Second year, bad. Third year, lower, but they can get out of it. Like... It's just a lose lose situation. It just, they really screwed up. Um, which is, is, it's unfortunate because uh, honestly, they need to be on the phones right now. They need to just trade Kirk Cousins. They, they need to, to hit up the Raiders and be like, hey guys, you know, we, we went a different direction. Do you like Kirk Cousins? <laughs> or something. Like, I, they got to do something. I just, it's just a rough situation. Like I said, the pick itself. I, I don't actually have a problem with it. I think it's an interesting one. Um, but like I said, it would have been better to throw $100 million at uh, Christian Wilkins and then draft your QB. You know, instead they, they threw a bunch of money at a QB and then they drafted a, a QB. Uh, sorry, I uh, just... Let's get back to success, all right? The Bears, number nine. Number nine, they had a Dunes eight. Um, so many mock drafts were, were calling for this. I didn't think it would happen, but it makes sense. You know, you had Latham go up. Um, so just, and then, and then Penix going at, at those two really at seven and eight, um, made sense that ended up pushing, uh, pushing him down. And then, yeah, just really, really great draft from the Bears. And then even the Vikings, you know, so, so far we have, uh, I got the first pick, fourth pick. Um, this was close because, you know, Joe Holt, they took the next best thing, you know, uh, but got this one right. Number eight, I think it was like Dallas Turner, uh, McCarthy. If I, if I knew for a fact the Giants, I should have known, um, but if I knew at the time the Giants weren't taking McCarthy, I would have assumed that he fell all the way down to the Vikings at 11 and then they wouldn't have had to trade up and then in a weird way everybody got who they wanted uh the Broncos I think Knicks is a, a good fit for them I don't know it's uh it's like Sean Payton kept rambling about he's like he's number one in this number one in that number one in this he's a decent QB for sure he's certainly somebody to look at that's why I said hey six QBs are going top 12 all these guys are worth it these teams need quarterbacks too so, yeah, really, uh, it worked out, except the Giants, you know, the Giants messed it up, but, and then the Falcons took one as well, but, um, yeah, and then Olu, um, let's see, where was he over here, I had him at, like, 18, um, you know, third, third tackle off the board, makes sense, that's pretty good, um, Bowers, we figured he would go in the teens, interesting pick for the Raiders, and then they went center in the second round, so they're kind of probably preparing to be, uh, not so great team next year and hopefully they can draft their QB or something but they're just they're grabbing pieces that will help but won't push them into getting wins that they they don't want <laughs> pretty much a tight end is one way to do that the Falcons they did that a few years ago with the Kyle Pitts thing but that backfired a lot um Fuega uh let's see where did he go on my board he Saints oh we got that one we got that one and the next one, we got that. And then Penix, or not Penix, but F F Flip McCarthy put him in there. Um, so we 
got some of these. Uh, that's cool. Uh, and then Murphy to Seahawks had him go a little later. Latu ended up being the first edge off the board, um, which, you know, he was always the, you know, the big, the big one. Um, I get, well, Turner, Turner kind of jumped him, and then Jared First was kind of another one of the big names, but, um, yeah, and then Chop, even Chop got into the first round. I messed that one up. I, I don't know. I think my early mock drafts, I had him going late first, and then I just slowly had him drop out of it for whatever reason. Um, Mims, this is pretty much the area I had him projected for. Um, Steelers went guard. Um, yeah, Chop, and then Eagles. You know, there were reports that the Eagles were looking to move up and take Mitchell up cornerbacks, you know. They weren't in super high demand, I guess. It took till 22 for one of them to be picked. I mean, for defense, it took until pick 15. So it was, you know, it makes sense. Um, Eagles were able to get him. Um, solid pick, too. And then I had this one in the one mock, but only one of them. But, of course, the Jaguars were going for a receiver. I mean, I just, that was an easy one. I did not have that. I had something else that I don't even remember because it was so stupid. Um... Yeah, Jared first. I mean, I don't know. Uh, just not uh, not not good selections by me at all. Um, but yeah, and then Cooper DeShane, you see him here, and Adonai Mitchell all ended up being second rounders. Um, but Barton went in the 20s. Morgan went in the 20s. That's where we had him. Um, Darion Arnold, I think he was more of a teens on my board. but um, And then Darius Robinson, um, you know, I heard that he could be a possible first rounder. Didn't put him there, but there he goes. Um, and then Xavier Worthy, I, you know, it's weird. I had, you know, as a very extremely casual Texas fan, I like Worthy more than Mitchell. You know, I, like I said a little bit ago, I, I have my thoughts, but like my thoughts, they, they aren't always good because I, I'm not really in this shit, you know. So I have to use everything to kind of figure stuff out uh, and it's easy to do everybody puts up mock drafts so uh, and then you hear stuff from teams but this whole time I, I would have had Worthy going ahead of Mitchell but it seemed like Mitchell was the more favorable prospect so I, I switched to that and I'm just wrong I just end up being wrong so it's like great um, but I get the Worthy pick to the Chiefs it seemed too obvious um didn't pick it, didn't pick it, um, for whatever reason, but, uh, yep, Guyton, he seemed like an end of the first round guy, especially with the way with tackles were flying off the board, Nate Wiggins, um, some might be surprised, he went ahead of, uh, DeGene, um, and Kool-Aid, but, you know, I, I could see it, I, I, I could see it, um, Purcell heard rumblings about him, how he, you know, leading up to the draft, he could be like a, a surprise pick, didn't uh, do anything about it in my mock drafts, but um, there he is, 31. Uh, seems like a good pick. A lot of people are hyped about that one. Xavier Leggett, um, you know, had him like second round. I don't know. Um, Panthers moved up into the first to get him. That's a good idea. Try to get a receiver to pair up with, with Bryce. Um, but yeah, in comparison to my board, um, like I said, DeShane, Mitchell all fell to the second. Dallas Turner ended up being lower. Um, Kool-Aid fell to second. Graham was in the right area. Newton fell to second. Troy Franklin, oh man, that guy fell all the way to the fourth. Um, JPJ fell to the second. Fatanu, um, where was he? Oh yeah, 20 to the Steelers, so yeah. Um... Guyton, yeah, he was there. Morgan was a little bit higher, but, I mean, not not too bad. Arnold had a little bit too high. Law, too. Who, who took him? Oh, it's the Colts. Okay, so I was so close. Oh, I was so close on that one, but had a couple of them, right? Um, but we'll take a look at the second round here. Keon Coleman. You now figured he could be like a second rounder. McConkie, 
second rounder. Um, Newton thought he could be a first Polk. Thought he could be second or third. Sweat, I thought the DUI thing would uh, mess with him a little bit, but he ends up being a high second round pick. Um, Cooper's there, Kool-Aid. Uh, Lasseter was a possible first rounder, uh, depending on how the demand for corners were. So I think the rankings ended up being fine. Just um, maybe, oh, they got selected late. Well, no, they didn't because it makes sense that he went behind this guy, ahead of this guy, whatever. Um, but yeah, there's JBJ, Melton, I don't even know that guy. Uh, Cooper was first linebacker off the board. Jonathan Brooks, uh, first running back off the board. Uh, Tyler was the first safety. So yeah, and then there's Mitchell, which, I don't know, I mean, I guess I, it makes sense why you'd be behind all these guys. I understand it. Um, but yeah, Neeland is an interesting guy. Um, a lot of these guys, I mean, once it gets to, like, late second round, it's just like, a, it's just a joke, like, you're just guessing at that point in the mock drafts. Um, but, yeah. And I don't see any guys that were, I had rated higher. I mean, Roman Wilson, he was a possible second rounder. Isaac thought he could have been maybe close to second round. Oh, there was some where I had Peyton Wilson, top linebacker, uh, but that was early on. I think that, that opinion pretty much changed then. Um, but Troy Franklin, yeah, fell all the way to the fourth round. That's crazy. That is, um, let's see, anything else here? Devontae Walker fell all the way to the fourth, but makes sense. Um, TJ Tampa thought he was going to be more of a second or third. He fell to the fourth. Um, but yeah, nothing. I don't think there's any crazier ones than that. Rattler to the Saints. Um, Jordan Travis, interesting one to the Jets. I really do like that pick. Let him develop, be the next guy after Rodgers in a couple of years. Um, into the sixth round. Joe Milton, weird pick for the Bats. We'll see what they do with him. Um, Riker was the first kicker, then Cardi went, Cam Little, uh, Kentucky QB went then. And then into the seventh, I don't think there's anything crazy here. Brendan Rice. <laughs> In the fake draft, I had him going 11th. That's hilarious. I love that. Um, Brad ended up being a 7th rounder. But Kalen King, guy was like a projected 1st rounder. Then he fell to the 2nd. And then he ends up being 3rd to last pick. Uh, in the seventh round, and then Jalen Key, Mr. Irrelevant. Um, but yeah, there it is. There it is. It was a very fun draft. Hey, I'm just glad I got the the prediction, er, prediction of six QBs in the top 12. I feel really good about that. Um, other than, you know, I the Jaden and Drake one, I'm going to count those as me having them right. All right. Okay. Is that, is that all right if I do that? Uh, <laughs> but uh, the Penix one, that was crazy. McCarthy Vikings. Um, Bonix to the Broncos. I had that. All right. And Fuega to the Saints. <laughs> Feel good about all those. <laughs> but uh, it's tough. It's tough because, like, once you get one wrong, it just starts to spiral. And the, the Chargers pick was definitely the spiral point and then the Giants spiraled it even further the Titans said we're going to keep it spiraling and then the Falcons said yeah let's keep this let's keep it spiraling let's keep it going and then the Bears Vikings Jets Broncos they calmed it down a little bit with some uh, some good picks there but yeah it was, a, it was a good draft 
let's see, let's see, let's do something. Who's gonna be, who's gonna be the best player out of this draft? Let's do it right now. Let's pick two. One offense, one defense. For offense, Marvin Harrison Jr. For defense, we'll go with we'll go with Byron Murphy. He was the second one off the board. I think Byron Murphy and Marvin Harrison Jr. will be the most impressive out of this draft. 